Today we're gonna to talk about how I got this. Good morning, YouTube. I am super excited to make this video today because we're gonna talk all about my New York City Marathon race, the experience, everything leading up to it that led to my sub four marathon PR. Couple housekeeping things before we get started. Go follow me on Instagram if you haven't already. I was posting content all throughout New York City Marathon weekend. And second, can't really call this housekeeping, but I just wanna thank everyone so much who reached out to me to say good luck before the race, who congratulated me after the race, everything, messages, posts, all this stuff. It truly means so much to me to have so much support from all of you. And I really think that also is partially what led to me having such a good race. So let's talk a little bit about what my goals were going into the New York City Marathon. My ultimate goal that I really, really wanted and kind of kept semi-quiet about was I really wanted a sub four marathon time. And because I had had such a good training cycle, I really felt like this was possible. My second goal was to PR and my third goal was to just go there and have a great time and really soak in the race and the experience because the last time I did New York was in 2015 and I was 25 years old and I don't think I really appreciated it as much as I should have. I am so happy to say that I achieved all three of those goals and it came out with a 3.57.07 marathon time, which is a about a 16 minute PR. And I also soaked in the course and had an absolute blast out there. So I figured what we'll do is we'll talk a little bit about my training plan. We'll talk a little bit about the days leading up to the race, the race itself. And then uh, I did ask you on Instagram, another reason to go follow me there, uh, to submit some questions and I will answer some of the questions. Okay, so first and foremost, let's talk about the plan. So I was on a 16 week training plan that my best friend and coach Kate created for me. What I like so much about having Kate as a coach is that because she is my good friend, she knows me well. So she knows that I don't wanna be running 100 mile weeks. I don't really even wanna be running 70 mile weeks. I was able to execute a good race off of having a peak week of just 50 miles. Most of the mileage in my training plan was easy mileage. So that would mean that I would go out and I would try to keep my heart rate in the 140s, 130s even, uh, just try not to hit that 150 mark or higher. Each week I would have a workout day where I would do some faster paced efforts, some intervals, that sort of thing, uh, just to get the legs moving. And also something that she incorporated was some marathon paced miles within my long runs. As training continued, it became easier and easier to run at those easy paces, which then led to it becoming easier for me to run at the marathon paced miles miles, which was about an 845 to an 855 pace. The max mileage I did on my long runs was 21 miles and I did two 21 mile runs. And that is sort of the plan that I stuck to. It worked out really, really well. I think it's important that when you're looking for a coach, they don't necessarily need to be your best friend, but they do need to understand the kind of person that you are. And the training needs to be able to reflect that. So if you're really busy and you don't have time to run a ton of mileage a week, or if you wanna run a ton of mileage a week, if whatever it is that you wanna do, I think your coach needs to be understanding of that because it only sets you up for success. On my long runs during training, I always brought my handheld, which was a mix of Gatorade and water, mostly Gatorade, and I brought gels to take every 40 minutes, which we'll get to when we talk about the marathon. Let's talk a little bit about the couple days leading up to the marathon. The entire week before the marathon, I was so nervous. It's interesting because I felt like I was really confident every other week of this training block. Like I didn't feel nervous. And then the week 
of the marathon, I started getting the nerves. I started getting that doubt. I don't know if you guys experience that too, but you start getting these doubts in your ear like, I don't know, can you really hold that pace for that long? And can you really do this? And people are watching what you're gonna be doing. And you know, all of that negative talk starts up. And the worst part about it is that you're in the taper week. So you're not really doing anything to uh, ease those nerves. For me, I manage a lot of my anxiety by running and the fact that I couldn't run didn't feel great. Come Thursday, I'm just packing everything, making sure I have it all, which is always stressful. Friday morning, doing the same thing and just trying to catch the train to get in to chill with the rest of the Believe in the Run train to NYC squad. When I got with them, I was still nervous, but I was a little bit better because I felt distracted because immediately we went to grab food, we went to the expo to get our bibs, and then we went to the Alley on the Run show, and then we had some downtime followed by a New Balance party. So there was a lot of socializing, there was a lot of distraction, lots of people were there, it was just just a really fun time, but there wasn't much time to sit and think about all of the what ifs. During this time, I'm trying to hydrate as much as I can. I brought water with me and Gatorade, just making sure I'm drinking it, making sure I'm taking in as much carbs as possible. Uh, I don't think I've truly ever eaten so many carbs before a race. Like it felt like overkill to me and it might've made my stomach feel a little bit upset. That could have also been nerves, uh, but it was a lot of carbs. Saturday morning, the day before the race, we had the shakeout run with all of the content creators that you could possibly think of in one room. And that was incredible. I don't typically love to run the day before a marathon, but I cut it a little bit short. So I only ended up running like 2.8 miles and it was fine. It was actually good for me to shake out my legs. After that, we had some downtime. Uh, my wife, Ariana and Kate came into the city and we just hung out in the room, watched some Vanderpump rules and got stuff ready for the next day. I had another bagel. I'm not sure I really want to look at another bagel for a long time. Around five o'clock, I met back up with the Train to NYC team and we went to get some more carbs, uh, some Italian. I got a pizza that was delicious. Like I said earlier, my stomach just was not right. It was definitely the nerves and definitely the extra carbs but I'll spare you the details. I wasn't really digesting anything properly and I don't know if like any of the nutrients from any of the foods was really like absorbing. <laughs> so I was a little worried about that and it just felt like no matter how much I ate, I was still hungry. I went to bed at like 9.30 but I couldn't fall asleep until more like 10.45, just like tossing and turning. It was too bright in my room. I was worried about daylight savings time, even though your phone does that for you. Just all the things were going through my mind. It was, it was crazy. So let's talk a little bit about my kit for marathon day. I decided to go with a bandit bra that I actually had just gotten and I hadn't run more than 10 miles in it, but it has pockets for gels and that is crucial. I went with a Cielli New York hat that Believe in the Run had sent me, which I trained in for a lot of the summer. Believe in the Run had sent the women a singlet or a crop for the shirt for the marathon. I decided to go with the singlet. I liked the crop, but the singlet just felt more comfortable. It's more what I'm used to. I had Zensa no logo arm sleeves. They were so comfortable. They didn't bother me at all. For my shorts, I went with uh, seven inch compression shorts from New Balance. Uh, I think I got them from Joe's New Balance outlet, but they are great. They have nice deep pockets. As far as fuel goes, this is what I've been sticking to in my training and it has worked great. So about 15 minutes before the race, I pop a Roctane gel. I think I took like the chocolate coconut flavor or something. And then following that, I changed to Morden. So every 40 minutes, I pop a Morden gel. Brought my Amphipod handheld had my Garmin, had my shocks, although I didn't use them at all because the crowds were just so damn loud. And yes, I went with the New Balance SC Trainer V2 as my marathon shoe. I love running in the SC Elite V3, can absolutely run a marathon in it. However, it digs into my ankle on both sides. So in order for me to wear it comfortably, I need to put KT tape on my ankle. And I just didn't want to take that chance on race day. I went back and forth whether I should wear this shoe, whether I should just go with the SC Elite V3s. And 
Eventually, I just decided to go with the safe choice, the reliable choice, the choice that I ran so many of my miles in this summer. I do not regret my decision at all. This shoe felt amazing the entire time I ran the marathon. I had absolutely zero issues with it. And the next day, my feet didn't even feel like I ran a marathon. Running this on race day, I guarantee it will be a good choice. So race day morning rolls around, it's like 4.15 in the morning and I hate waking up at 4.15 in the morning. Uh, but it was daylight savings time so I kept telling myself, all right, it's more like 5.15 in the morning. Honestly, like it is so hard for me to get down nutrition that early because I just don't want it at all. But I did my best. Went downstairs at 5.15, met with the rest of the crew and we were on our way to the buses. I brought some grams, like a sleeve of grams, and I had basically the entire sleeve of the grams beforehand. And I, to Megan Featherston's credit, I have never used grams for a race, and I really do think that they work. So, just some food for thought there, literally. By this time, I was feeling pretty good. The energy was electric, and it just made me feel more like this, ready to go nervous energy, rather than like, oh, I don't know if I can do this energy. The wave one runners are called to go to their corrals and fortunately for me I had a nice card from New Balance that um, allowed me to start a little bit early. I was originally slated to start at 9.45 and I got to start at 9.10. Also uh, that was very nice and I'm very very grateful for that. Standing at that start line is just the most electric insane feeling. Like the energy, I, I wish I could just bottle it up and take it and put it on my shelf and leave it there. Like, and just get a whiff of it every time I needed a boost of energy. It's just, it's indescribable. The gun goes off and I find myself at like a nice comfortable 9.30 pace <laughs> while all the 3.15 marathoners are passing me, but I don't care. I'm not trying to get caught up in that. I wanna run my own race. Uh, and I feel like I, I did that. So I kept it at like a ni nice solid 9.30 pace and it stayed that way through mile six, I believe, when I saw my dad, Ariana and Kate and seeing them just gave me like this power up, even more of a boost to keep going. And at this point, I'm going a little faster than I had originally intended this early in the race. Like it's high 850s, low nines. And I'm like, ooh, maybe I should back off, but I'm feeling good and I'm not feeling like I'm overexerting myself. So I'm like, let's just keep it going and see, you know, how it goes. I'm chugging away. I get to about mile eight or nine and I see a bunch of my work buddies with signs for me in Brooklyn. And it was again, electrifying, best feeling ever. And at this point, my legs are still feeling really good. It's still low nines, high 850s for my splits, even some 840s in there. So I'm just thinking like, all right, I feel good. Like, I guess I'll just keep going. I guess I'll just try this pace for as long as I can. And if I need to back off, I will. Taking my gels every 40 minutes and that's all going well. I'm able to keep it down. I'm not having any stomach issues despite having lots of stomach issues before the race. So that is fantastic. And I see my dad, Ariana and Kate again at mile 12-ish and I'm still feeling really good. And I'm thinking to myself like, they're gonna probably think I'm going a little too fast right now, but I just like hugged them and I said, I don't know how I'm doing this, but I'm doing it. And they were like, let's go, let's go. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna go for it. And I'm not gonna worry about the pace. I'm gonna go by pure feel and keep this up. And maybe the, wheel, the wheels will fall off eventually. Like they're just gonna fall off eventually. We get to the Queensboro Bridge and that sucks, obviously. My watch is saying that I'm going at like a 16 minute pace. I don't know, it was all messed up because of the signal in there, not good. Uh, but I didn't walk at all on the bridge. I made sure I kept going because I just felt like if I walked, then it would sort of be the kiss of death. <laughs> Finally, we got off the bridge onto First Ave and then it's the electrifying feeling again. At this point, I'm still feeling really good, but obviously I'm tired from that effort. And First Ave is a lot of like incline, but then like there's some descents and nothing crazy, but you feel it. You definitely feel that movement and I'm feeling it. And I'm supposed to be seeing my cheer squad again around mile 17 or 18. And I'm looking for them and I'm looking for them, but I missed them. They saw me, but I somehow missed them. 
Now keep in mind, like if you cheered my name at some point and I didn't acknowledge you, I truly could not hear anything out there. It was so hard because of how loud the crowds were. Thankfully, I did see my cousin Erin and gave her a high five around mile 18 or 19. And that like sort of reset my brain and got me going and going and going again. I was still maintaining my pace, but it didn't feel like quite as easy. The pain cave was starting for sure. Mile 21 comes and goes and now I'm in uncharted territory because obviously in training, I didn't run anything higher than 21 miles. I'm thinking the wheels are just gonna come off this bus. And I felt like maybe I can still get sub four even if that does happen because of all the miles I ran in like the 855-ish pace. So around mile 22, I saw another coworker and that was amazing. Shortly after that, I saw Kofuzi and I was definitely tired when he got to me. Sorry, Mike, that I could barely talk. I think I just raised my arm like this and it was all I had at that moment. Uh, but this was definitely when it started getting super tough. At mile 22, I could not believe that I still had four miles left of this race. Point two. Shortly after that, I saw Drew Whitcomb and that was another boost. So it was so good to see all these people because when I was starting to feel that feeling of like, I don't wanna do this anymore, I wanna be done. There was always like somebody there to pick me up. Around mile 21 is where I got really sick of the Morden. I think I just stopped taking the gels. And I also started taking Gatorade and water from the course. I still had stuff left in my handheld, but I wanted more of it. I needed more concentrated Gatorade. I needed more like colder water. And it was actually helpful because I would take the water from the stops, but then I also had some extra Gatorade in my handheld. So I was just, it was a free for all at that point. <laughs> there was no rhyme or reason to what I was doing. If I was thirsty, I was taking a drink of something somewhere. If you have never run the New York City Marathon, I will just tell you that Central Park, which is like the last three-ish miles of the course, is absolutely brutal. Like you're exhausted at this point and it is a lot of incline. I see my cheer squad again, Ariana, Kate, and my dad, and I was donezo. Like I wanted to cry. I wanted to say to them like, I really can't do the same or I can't believe I have two more miles left. But they must have known that I'd probably be feeling that way and they did not let me say that. <laughs> it just helped me to like say, all right, you only have two more miles of this whole marathon. Like, let's go. No matter what the pace is, like just keep going. And surprisingly, my pace was still like in the low nines. It did hit like 930s while I was going up these inclines, but it never really like reached 10, it never reached 945. I, I don't know how I did it, but somehow I managed to keep all those splits in the low nines, high eights. Finally, we reach Columbus Circle. We're like right at the finish and we're running, we're running, running. I see the finish line and I just can't believe it. I can't believe what a race I had. And I'm looking at the clock and it says like 357 something and I'm kind of far back and I just start running as fast as I can to get there because I would love to have a time like not in the 359 range. I'd like to have it in 358 because that sounds even better, right? And I hit it, I get there, and I cross the finish line and my legs just feel like they're gonna come out from under me. So I stop, I put my hands on my knees and I just, just took a moment and I realized like, holy crap, you just did it. I text Ariana and Kate immediately and they tell me that the app said 357.07 which is crazy. The walk out of the park was absolute hell because it's like a mile. They really gotta do something about that. I mean, it's terrible. But that is how the race went. I couldn't have asked for a better day. Like all the planets aligned and maybe I'll never have another race like that. It is entirely possible. But I am so thankful that I did have that race on Sunday. I do wanna say one thing though. PRs are not everything and so much time we put emphasis on numbers. And I really do want to drive home the point that even if I had not PR'd that day, it still would have been like an incredible race and experience. Now I'll answer some questions uh, that you guys sent in uh, that I may not have already answered. What was the hardest mile and how did I push through? Definitely like mile 23 was really difficult. I just pushed through by saying you're almost done. I know three miles sounds like a lot right now, but 
you're going to be done before you know it. Like most of the race is already over. Was there a time I felt a crash coming on? Potentially like miles 18 and 19, I felt like maybe there's potential for me to, uh, to crash about here and the wheels are gonna come off, but thankfully they did not. What do you think made the difference versus Chicago in succeeding to run sub four? That's a really good question. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I wanted a sub four marathon in 2021 when I did Chicago and I blew up and ran a 4.45. Uh, but I think the difference is just, a lot of it is attitude and just being older and wiser. I think I needed Chicago to run the sub four that I ran on Sunday. I went into this experience with a positive vibe, a positive feeling as much as I could and really believing that I could do it. And if I didn't do it, it was gonna be fine. What was my favorite borough to run through? Definitely Brooklyn. Herm Run sent in a question. Can we talk about the 0.37 miles? Literally everyone has, we need a remeasure. Yeah, I finished with like 26.44 as my total. And it said I had finished it in like 355. So did I run a 357 or did I run a 355 or less? Because the course was long. Drives me crazy. They do need to remeasure it, you're right. Most underrated part of the course? I don't know, maybe like 4th Ave. Do the armbands have function or just fashion? No, they have function. They were to keep me warm. And I probably could have taken them off at some point, but I was superstitious and doing well, so I didn't want to take them off in case that would somehow impact my performance. How did you stay so consistent in your pace? Honestly, like, I don't want to say luck. It's not luck, but um, I did get lucky that day and I just did so much marathon pace work in my training uh, and I really think that paid off. How hard is New York City compared to the other marathons you've run? Which is your favorite? Uh, this is by far my favorite marathon to run, hands down, uh, but it is a very hard marathon. Can you describe your feelings when you crossed the line and you broke four hours? I don't even know what my feelings were like. I think I was in shock, like it hadn't really sunk in yet that I had done it. But relief that I was done for sure. And just like this exhausted but completely ecstatic feeling. Was the fueling different than past marathons? Yes, actually it's interesting. Every marathon I've run, I've used different gels. <laughs> so for Chicago, I was using spring energy. For my marathon on Long Island, I used Honey Stinger, and then this time I used Goo Roctane in the beginning, but then stuck to Morden. And I think that Morden is gonna be what I use from now on. Would you recommend NYC as someone's first marathon? Honestly, yes, because the crowd support is, it's, it's the best, it's second to none. It was my first marathon, and it, I think, is what kept me going. Like, I got the bug for running more marathons from doing New York City first. Best advice where to stay if running the marathon? Um, I would say probably somewhere close to the finish if possible and taking like an Uber or taxi to the buses, the ferry, whatever in the morning. Uh, but you're gonna want to not be trekking all over the city to get back to your hotel at the end. I think I've pretty much answered everything else um, that you guys asked me. So, I mean, I guess we'll wrap up the video here. But again, I just want to express my undying gratitude to Believe in the Run and New Balance for this opportunity. Before I even started making videos, I had been reading the Believe in the Run website, watching their videos, and they had been a big influence on me making a YouTube channel in the first place. So, to now call these people friends and to have experienced so much with them, it's a really full circle moment and one that I will never take for granted. So thank you and thank you New Balance, thank you New York Roadrunners, thank you New York City Marathon. What a freaking time. If there's any questions I didn't answer, please feel free to put them in the comments down below and I'll be happy to get to them. Uh, what's next for me? I don't know two weeks off of running and definitely doing a turkey trot on Thanksgiving.
Well, everyone, that concludes my 2023 New York City Marathon recap. If you enjoyed this video, please like it down below and subscribe. And when you're done with all that, hit the notifications bell so you can find out every time I upload a new video. Check it out, check it out. I have another video for you next week, but in the meantime, get out there, get on the grind, and don't forget to run like heller. <sighs> I'm still speechless. But I'll see you next time. What do you guys think of this setup also? You like this? It's kind of fun, right? Yeah. Let me know what you think about this. If you're still watching, I think uh, pretty soon I'm going to be making my own studio in the house. So it'll look even cooler than this soon.